Hello, and I am Dr. Corey King from AskDrKing.com. We are located in Lafayette, Colorado, and my specialty is working with patients who are struggling with autoimmune conditions, Lyme disease, chronic infections such as chronic Epstein-Barr virus, and helping those patients regain their lives. And in this video, we're going to be talking about some very important genetic mutations. All of my new patients, I run genetic testing on them. It's part of the triangle, if you will, of lab tests that I will perform on a patient in order to give us the most in-depth answers so that way we can complete their picture of what's going on and come up with a really detailed game plan on how to help them achieve their health goals. Now I want you to start to think of your body as a bucket and everybody's body is different in size and your bucket is going to be determined or the size of your bucket is going to be determined by how many genetic mutations you have. During our lifetime, we're accumulating toxins. We're all exposed to toxins. No matter how clean we eat, how many air purifiers we have in our home, we're being exposed to toxins. And our bucket is going to be filling up with those toxins over time. If you can empty your bucket really well, then your bucket never overflows with these toxins and you never become sick. If you cannot empty your bucket, if you cannot detoxify very well, you'll accumulate these toxins and maybe your bucket is a small bucket and you become sick in your 20s or your 30s. Or maybe your bucket's larger, you have less genetic mutations, and you become sick in your 70s or your 80s. It all has to do with how well you're able to empty that bucket. Now, the genes that were passed down to you, which we all have some crummy genes, it's not our fault, it's not our parents' fault, it's just the genes that we inherited, what is important is how many of those genes we have and what do those genes impact in regard to our bodily functions. Today we're talking about methylation mutations. This is the most common mutation that patients talk about when they hear the word genetic mutations come up. A lot of doctors have tested patients for what is called the MTHFR mutation. And there's two of them. One is called the 1298 and one is called the 677. Now those two genes are not the only methylation genes. There are 11 others. Because a lot of times patients reach out to me and we're talking on our first complimentary call, I ask them about genetic tests and they go, oh my doctor tested me for MTHFR and I'm negative. And I go, well that's great, but did they test you for the other 11 methylation mutations that mimic or do the same thing that, as the MTHFR mutations? A lot of times that answer is no. This is where this video is really important. So continue watching because you're gonna learn a lot in the next few moments. You can be heterozygous for a mutation, meaning one of your parents passed one version of the gene down to you. You can be homozygous for the mutation, which means both of your parents passed a version of the gene down to you. Now, if you're homozygous for the mutation, it's really neat because you can go back to your parents and say, mother, father, you both gave me this gene and this is what the gene impacts in you. If you have children, you will know for certain if you pass those genes down to your children if you are homozygous. So it's all the more reason for your children to be living a healthier lifestyle. If they're old enough to understand what we are talking about right now, then share this video with them or start to talk to them about this now so they don't develop health conditions down the road. Methylation, what does it mean? Well, this is how I teach it to my patients. There's over 200 different biochemical processes that are dependent upon healthy methylation. We're not going to go over all 200. We're going to go over some very important ones. Number one being controlling your immune system. Telling your immune system there is a bad guy, you need to go, see, or you need to see that bad guy, and you need to go kill that bad guy. When you're done attacking the bad guy's immune system, do not continue attacking. If there's no more bad guys for your immune system to attack, your immune system can start attacking your own tissue, like your thyroid tissue. My wife Natasha has Hashimoto's disease, an autoimmune thyroid condition. When you're methylating well, your immune system can do its job. You don't develop cancer, you don't develop autoimmune conditions, you don't have chronic infections such as recurring Epstein-Barr virus. That's another reason patients reach out to me. The second thing that happens when you're methylating really well, this is gonna go back to our bucket analogy, is you're going to be able to detoxify very well. 
We're all exposed to those toxins. Remember, that bucket is gonna be filling up over time. Can you empty that bucket before it overflows and you become sick? That's the big question. If you have multiple, multiple methylation mutations, you may not be emptying that bucket quickly enough, which means you are going to become sick at some point in your life. Your liver is one of the big organs that helps you detoxify and get inflammation down. If you are a thyroid patient, your liver is extremely important for converting your T4, an inactive thyroid hormone, to T3, which is considered an active thyroid hormone. That's the hormone that every single cell in your body utilizes. So if you're not methylating properly, chances are very high that you may be under converting your main thyroid hormone. Extremely important for you because if you're only on a T4 medication and your T3 levels are low, you're still going to feel crummy on your thyroid medication, no matter how high they increase it. The third thing that happens when you're methylating really well is your mitochondria are going to be able to do their job properly. Your mitochondria are these little batteries in each and every single cell in your body and their job is to produce energy. We call that ATP. If your mitochondria can't produce ATP, energy is going to be down, stamina won't be there, you won't be able to recover very well after exercise. The other thing that happens when you're methylating well is you're able to absorb your B, as in boy, your B vitamins. So think energy and stamina again, but also how you feel emotionally. The B vitamins play a major role in emotions. When you're methylating well, dopamine and serotonin are being produced properly. If dopamine's not being produced properly, there's going to be anxiety. If serotonin is not being produced properly, you can struggle with depression. The last thing that I always mention to patients is, when you're methylating properly, your neurological system is going to be working as it should. So that's your brain and that's your nervous system. So any neurological disorders, you want to start to look at methylation. Recently, a young man reached out to me. He's having seizures. Nobody can figure it out. Guess what? Multiple methylation mutations. So you always want to dive into these hammer daddy genes, I call them, because these are the most important genes, I think, when it comes to chronic health conditions. Remember, there's 13 methylation mutations. So let's go back to the MTHFR, the most common gene that patients know about. They sometimes call it the mother gene, sometimes they call it something worse, but the 1298 and the 677. So if your homozygous for the 1298 is the better one to have, but it's going to decrease methylation by up to 20%. And you're thinking, eh, 20%, the body can still, it can function relatively well at 80%. Well, I, I still don't want to only function well at 80%. I want to be as close to 100% as possible. That's just me. I'm coming from an athletic performance background. If you're homozygous for the 677, that is going to decrease methylation by up to 70%. Just that one gene that's mutated or has two mutations in it, I should say. It's homozygous or you're homozygous for it. Up to 70% reduction in methylation. Don't forget, there's 11 other methylation genes. So let's take the FOLR1 and the FOLR2 genes. A lot of patients reach out to me because they're trying to conceive, or maybe the woman in the relationship is having a tough time caring to full term. She's having multiple miscarriages. This happens a lot. So just last week, it was really fun. Natasha and I, my wife, we were out traveling. I, I get to work remotely a lot of the time, and we were traveling, and Tuesday morning, I open up my email, and two of the first emails that I received were patients saying, guess what, Dr. King, I'm pregnant. And just on this past Tuesday, so that was last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, one of my patients that we're working with, she's had a miscarriage at 12 weeks and at 16 weeks, emailed me, she's 17 weeks and five days into her pregnancy. We're addressing these genes like the FOLR1 and the FOLR2 mutations in these patients along with anything else that we may find because those two mutations really impact your folate receptors. Whenever you get pregnant, the doctors inevitably tell you, oh, make sure to take your prenatal. The reason they tell you that is because it has folate in there. Well, what they're not telling you is there's different types of folate. And by looking at your genetic mutations, you can actually learn specifically 
what type of folate do you need to one, help you conceive, but two, carry to full term and have a healthy baby. This is where looking at the genetic mutations is extremely fun, but it's also life-changing because once you reach your health goals and you're kicking butt, then you'll know what to do from a genetic standpoint to keep yourself there. For example, on Monday, I was talking to a mother and her 17-year-old son. We've been working with them for the past several months. He's coming to the end of his care plan with me, and he's doing really well. And our conversation on Monday was covering the topic of what does he still need to take from a supplemental standpoint. So what we did was we pulled out his genetic report, and we looked at his main methylation genes and some of his detoxification genes, and he has some gluten genes as well as, as some other ones in there. And we said, let's always support these genes here because you support those genes long term, you're going to give yourself the best chance of success when it comes to staying as healthy as possible. So let's summarize methylation for you. Let's go over the medical definitions that actually come in the genetic test reports results. So reading right from that, you're going to see they mention that when you have these mutations, um, these weaknesses, there's going to be a reduced level of methylfolate, which is going to produce a significant biochemical effect, including poor production of dopamine, there's anxiety, serotonin, there's the depression, pregnancy complications, we talked about that, poor healing of the nervous system, I'm just going to say nervous system function, weak mitochondrial function, that's energy production, Reduced production of glutathione. That's something we didn't talk about, but we're going to be talking about on another webinar or another video. Poor cell turnover. So when your cells are basically being killed off, they're just not reproducing properly or growing new cells. And poor function of the T cell lymphocytes. That's the immune system. That is what we talked about in the very beginning. If your immune system can't see and kill the bad guys, chronic infections, autoimmune disease, even cancer. So I hope that this video made a lot of sense to you. If your doctors are not diving into your genetics, I highly encourage you find a doctor that's going to do that. Talk to your current doctors about it. Maybe encourage them to start looking at this and learning about it. It's taken me many, many, many years to actually understand how all of this plays a big role in the body and how to take that information and apply it to a patient. So encourage your doctor to start doing that if you need help in regards to your chronic health condition and you think that this may be a missing piece of your puzzle, feel free to schedule a complimentary consultation. You can do that at askdrking.com, A-S-K-D-R-K-I-N-G. And what we're going to do is we're going to get on a telemedicine call. We're going to see each other face to face and we're going to go over your health concerns. We're going to go over your goals. If I feel that we may be a good fit for each other and I'm confident that I may be able to help you, we'll talk about how to move forward. My staff will be sending out intake forms to you. We're going to look at old laboratory tests, and we're just going to see what's been going on with your health and see, hey, what else can be done? Is something being missed? And if it's being missed, let's go figure out that missing piece of the puzzle so we can complete your picture. Have a wonderful day, and I look forward to teaching you some more on some other videos.